How's it going everybody? Welcome to another video. I'm your host Rising Oblivion. Today guys we're going to be talking about Project ReFantasy. So the new year's is over so I figured we might as well get into full gear here with brand new content when it comes to Atlas. Well, turns out some stuff that they had here at the end of uh, they have some interviews with the Famitsu magazine. If you don't know Famitsu, they do all kinds of just Japanese, you know, video games and stuff like that. But they had the project manager at Atlas first creative department People responsible for Shin Megami Tensei, Etrian Odyssey, and stuff like that, Shinjiro Takada. So they had him, and they actually interviewed him here, and he said that regarding Takada's aspirations for 2022, he says that he chooses challenge as the keyword. What that means exactly, I'm not too sure. Maybe the games are going to be challenging, a little bit harder to develop, or they have a lot planned for this year. So a lot of people are sort of speculating what this could be, because there are three different studios here that we have for... Um, you know, Atlas. They have the SMT5 studio, which seems like they just finished development there. Doesn't really seem like there could be a whole lot more coming from that main studio there, the, you know, main development studio. SMT5 just came out. If they're going to be working on a brand new game, it's going to take some time for them to be able to come up with something new. Then, of course, they have the P Studios, which made Persona 3, 4, and 5. We kind of know that because they're a newer ish studio. I believe they did P3, maybe they did on P4, but I think P3. Four and five technically they did that and more than likely they're going to be in charge of the 25th anniversary type of stuff and you know they're subjugated to just doing persona stuff so potentially we could see something persona related this year in terms of a new game or a spin-off or something like that maybe but that's kind of not exactly what this full video is going to be about it seems like there's something else that they kind of have going on when they're talking about 2022. So what we really need to be thinking about is that third studio that they have over at Atlas, their third development studio, which is going to be the Studio Zero guys. So you have the main studio that does like the SMT type stuff, specifically more Shin Megami Tensei, you know, mainline Shin Megami Tensei, then you have the P Studios for Persona, stuff like that, and then you have Studio Zero, which for them, it seems like we haven't really had a whole lot going on from them, but that is because they have been working on the Project ReFantasy, which is what I had as a thumbnail and everything, it's actual art from the game. So yes, this is a legitimate game, they are working on a new IP, but the thing is, this is supposed to be a much bigger game than what we actually think it's going to be. According to this interview, they had talked a little bit about the developments and certain things about this, and he said that this is going to be a very, very big surprise to everyone once they get a hold of this game. So it seems like this is going to be some kind of, you know, RPG. I don't know if they exactly said if it's going to be turn-based or what, but we do know it's going to be a Japanese, you know, RPG set in a more old-timey sort of like D&D-esque sort of environment, it seems like. Shin Megami Tensei is always Tokyo. Uh, Persona is usually just like Tokyo. More Japan, I guess, in general. But it seems like Project Fantasy might be jumping into more fantasy. It's in the title there. Fantasy-like worlds and whatnot. And it's supposed to be much bigger than what we expect here. Them even going to say that this is going to be an Atlas title that they hope to make a pillar of the company as a new representative, new IP. Which means... It's supposed to be one of the big pillars for the company. And they have Shimagami Tensei, Persona, and then now they're going to have Project ReFantasy. And this is why I think this game is actually going to be released this year, is because we have news from the actual people there. You know, the guy, the representative of the main studio there, saying that they have a title called Project Pin. Um, according to their Australia rating, there was a game called Project Pin, which might be the Project ReFantasy that has Project in there. They might be changing code names. It might have a completely different name than Project ReFantasy. It might move to Project Pin here later, or if it's not already, and then move on to a brand new title. But we do know for sure that they are working on this game, and they've been working on it for five whole years. So yes, I believe the last thing that Studio Zero actually fully worked on was actually Catherine, and that's the normal version of Catherine. I don't think they really touched the full body version. They might have, and if they did, I don't think it took a whole lot more. It added some different endings to the game, some new storyline stuff, and of course some new dialogue and things like that. But I don't think it did a whole lot to setting them back with this game. Even if so, it has been a full five years that they've been working on this project, ReFantasy. From how it looks, I don't think the first studio is going to be doing a whole lot when it comes to Shin Megami Tensei. Persona or SMT5 just came out, so it's going to be a little bit while before they could do something. The Persona people, they're going to be working on their stuff, I think all the way up until August, 
when it comes to, you know, the Persona 25th anniversary. I know they outsource uh, a lot of remasters and different things like that, but I think the actual Persona Studios are going to be working on other Persona games. So, what do they have to possibly announce in 2022? What exactly could they be talking about then? It must have to be something within the actual, you know, in studio of Studio Zero. It has to be something from them. We'd assume. I could be wrong. Maybe they're doing something completely different or they've been sort of shadow developing another SMT title or something like that. That is a potential. Or maybe fully remaking an older SMT title or something like that. Always saying that maybe they're fully remastering, you know, Persona 3 or something like that. Now, I'm not going to try and get my hopes up or be a port beggar or whatever you want to call it, but this is just speculation as to what they could be talking about for 2022. It looks like they really have amped up a lot this Project Re Fantasy and wanted to be a huge staple within the company and they seem like they're about to announce some pretty cool things for 2022 and the success of SMT5, the success of Persona, it seems like they're not missing when it comes to these mainline things that they're doing with their, you know, studios. It makes sense for them as to why they made the P Studios and it looks like Studio Zero is finally going to get their chance to maybe show us exactly what they've got. And I hope they do too. I look forward to playing this game. I like more old fashioned lurking, you know, turn based games. Whether it's turn based or not, who knows? Maybe this is the first time, uh, you know, I'm going to say this, and maybe Atlas has done this already. Um, I think they actually have done that. I think the Rider games are not actually turn based or anything like that. But this might not be a turn based game. Who really knows? This might be different. We could see something completely different here when it comes to, to you know, Project Re Fantasy. And I wasn't counting Strikers and stuff like that. Those are games that are outsourced to third-party studios who make those games. I'm talking like a mainline in, um, you know, studio, you know, non-turn-based JRPG. We could potentially see that, well, you know, on new consoles, at least HD anyway, of them doing a non-turn-based game. I don't think they've at least done that in HD or put it on new consoles or anything. And as far as we know, Project New Fantasy, we don't know if it has any ties to either Sony or Switch. We don't know if it's going to be a title that's stuck on Switch, a title that's stuck on PlayStation. We don't actually know. But when it comes to Studio Zero, like I said, they did a lot of work on Catherine. So it looks like, you know, with how Catherine went, Catherine's on Steam, at least the normal version. I think Full Body eventually, I think they said, is going to be going there to Steam. Catherine's on the PS3, PS4 in terms of Full Body, and also on the Switch with Full Body. So... It looks like maybe Project Refantasy could also, I don't know, end up getting the same treatment, but I don't think they considered Catherine to be a main staple, you know, a constant thing that they're going to be working on and releasing, whereas Project Refantasy seems like it's going to be something they're going to be keep working on, might potentially have sequels and stuff like that, so they might end up getting some type of licensing agreement with that. I don't think it works so well to compare this exactly to Catherine, seeing as Catherine was more of a test on HD models and working with HD models, if you look, that's kind of technically Atlas's first time doing a full-on HD game, because it came out in the PS3 era and they were making that leap, that jump to that. It was kind of a test, kind of not, uh, just to actually look like a game, and I believe it was technically supposed to be used for Persona, but they turned it into something else because they had a lot of assets and a lot of things they were working on, and of course they had the whole puzzle thing, and I think they just wanted a little bit of a breather, to be completely honest, but Project Re Fantasy, as far as we know, might not be stuck to a certain type of, you know, agreement to just Sony or an agreement to just Switch or something like that, or, or hell, even maybe even Steam or something like that. It doesn't look like, from as far as we can tell, that it's stuck to that. They're five years in development, they're very antsy to do stuff with this, and this is actually the perfect time to talk about this. Um, at least we know in January, at least this month, there's not going to be a lot going on because the Persona stuff is going to be in February. That's when the third announcement for the 25th anniversary is going to be. And then we have some time until after that, of course, and then in March is when we're getting Arena coming out. And then maybe in the summer, we might see something with Project Re Fantasy. We do know that Persona 4 Golden dropped on Steam during June of... A two years ago technically now that it's uh 2022 strangely enough so this year maybe even this summer or maybe earlier maybe they'll do it around the time uh the persona announcements are who knows i could just try and see them trying to get stuff out of the way if you ever noticed that whenever they were doing smt5's release and stuff like that they didn't talk about persona and now the smt is kind of dying down because smt 5s already came out persona 25th anniversary doesn't have anything till Fe february and kind of march so 
maybe we'll see something in January, or we'll have to wait until after March to potentially see something with Project Re Fantasy. Hopefully, we at least get, at the worst case scenario, some different trailers or a release date or something like that from this game. If not, potentially this might be their big game that they're trying to release this year. Like I said, five years of development going on six. They definitely have had a long time to work on this game and who knows, we might see it here and I believe that they are probably further along than what we actually think. Five years is a long time to work on a game. I bet it's going to be in HD, but they could be trying to go to a whole different direction. I don't know. Let me know, how do you feel about this game, Project Re Fantasy? Do you think this is going to be the right way that you want to see them do this? I personally think this is cool. I like seeing them go into different directions and try different things with their games. Because, you know, Persona has its own studio. They're a little bit different compared to how, you know, the older Persona games were when they were compared to Shin Megami Tensei. They feel completely different in certain aspects, and I like that. So now we're going to have a third studio who's maybe doing similar things that Persona or Shin Megami Tensei did, but now they're going to be doing their own spin on it, having it be completely different and fully different ways. So I'm kind of excited about this. Atlas does make great games, so I'm not too um, you know, worried about it. I'm sure it at least will be pretty fun, pretty cool to play. But um, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Like, comment, subscribe for more content. Um, links are down in the description below. Click the bell to be notified whenever I go live again or whenever I have a new video go up. I'll keep you included on everything when it comes to Project Re Fantasy. Remember, the director has been kind of teasing this stuff, has been kind of talking about this. And as far as we can tell, there's an actual game that got a rating for this as well. So we have some decent leaks here, some decent details at least when it comes to this game's existence. We do know it's there. We do know that they have been speculating and sort of poking around at the idea of it here lately. So I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.